Thank you and uh, good afternoon everyone. Today is our briefing uh, on COVID-19 uh, on June of June the 18th, 2020. And uh, as always, we'll have a, a full report and full information uh, on what's next. We're gonna go over our numbers. We're gonna go over uh, some additional uh, reopening opportunities. Um, and then also our department of uh, our health department and Kelly Colopy, who leads our department will also be here to give some additional updates uh, and also uh, to answer any questions that, that we might have. Um, Want to just, though, however, just begin uh, today uh, by recognizing and just spending a minute um, talking about the Supreme Court today. Uh, the Supreme Court today ruled on an important ruling as it relates to DACA, uh, which we all know is a program that assists uh, dreamers and uh, particularly young people in our community uh, that are immigrants uh, who have worked so hard to be in this country uh, and that have been and continue to contribute so much to our communities. Uh, this positive ruling by the Supreme Court today uh, affirms our belief that immigrants uh, have every right to work uh, and be safe in our community. Uh, they are part of our country um, and our city. I want to applaud our immigrants' rights groups who have uh, really fought tirelessly uh, to recognize our DACA youth and young people, never given up hope, and I want to thank them for their uh, contributions. Uh, I also want to say that um, as an immigrant myself, uh, th these young people in our country deserve um, all the same opportunities uh, that I got. Um, a, a, as a young person, um, and as a former teacher who's had many DACA students uh, in the classroom, uh, I'm very um, I'm very overjoyed today to know that these uh, amazing uh, young people and students, um, folks that are in the workplace and our workforce that work really hard, uh, have an opportunity uh, to continue in this important program, um, and they deserve uh, today and now uh, a path to citizenship uh, that this Congress should uh, move forward and do. There's still a long road ahead uh, for our immigrant community, but today was a really good day and a, and a, and a good step. So I want to thank this, uh, the, those that have been involved in this and the Supreme Court made the right decision. Um, also just want to uh, note that earlier this week, um, the Supreme Court also uh, uh, had, a, had a very positive ruling as it relates to uh, discrimination against LGBTQ people, um, particularly in the workplace. Uh, again, this affirms that all people uh, all individuals, regardless of who they love or who they are, uh, deserve the opportunity to work and to be and to be treated fairly, uh, equally amongst their peers, and not have the uh, uh, the fear of being fired for, for who they are uh, or for how they identify. And so again, a, a good week um, for both communities. And um, like all of you, I love that Long Beach is a place um, that loves and supports everybody. So now let's get into our COVID update. Um, as of today, we have 2,888 residents who've tested positive. Approximately 2,173 have recovered. We've also lost a total of 116 Long Beach residents, and our, our prayers and love go out to, of course, uh, everyone that we've lost in, in our community. Uh, COVID continues to, of course, be the leading cause of, of death um, in our city in just a short amount of time, uh, and it's really tragic. We know that most of our uh, deaths, uh, currently 89 of them, come from uh, long-term care facilities, and we know that, that COVID is particularly um, uh, is, is harmful to our seniors and vulnerable communities. So just briefly, uh, I want to just give you a snapshot before I talk about kind of what's reopening next and the process. Uh, right now, our hospital occupancy is at uh, 58%. And um, I say that because that occupancy uh, has remained fairly stable over the course of the last few weeks. Um, it is uh, a sign that gives, gives our health department and our doctors the ability um, to feel comfortable that our hospitals are not overrun or are yet uh, overrun. Um, and, uh, and our hospitalization rate is at 74. Um, and I believe for the last couple of weeks, uh, we have been in about the mid mid 70s on that rate as well, so there has not been yet a um, a, a spike, uh, and our hospital capacity, with not just the current uh, hospitalization numbers I gave, but also the ability to expand, um, is, is strong. And so the city is feeling very confident um, that we are are managing these reopenings with so much more, quite frankly, risk that's associated in the community. Uh, we're doing okay. Um, that's not to say that COVID-19 is still not serious and should not be taken seriously, 
but we are grateful that our hospitals have capacity if someone were to fall sick to take care of you or anyone in your family. So moving on to the health order. Um, Long Beach will be making adjustments today to our health order. I want to begin by, by noting that um, uh, the, the, the state of California often puts out guidelines as to when uh, certain industries can reopen. Um, as a reminder, uh, cities cannot go faster than the state guidelines, uh, but they can go slower and actually are encouraged to do so if our numbers uh, are falling behind the state average or if we're not doing as well as other communities. We know that LA County and Long Beach have uh, more challenges than other rural areas of the state and areas of the state that are less dense. And so oftentimes the state or the governor will, will declare and say, um, these industries can open up on this date. Um, what, what he is saying is that that is the earliest date that they can reopen, but that each individual county or health jurisdiction then has to decide, looking at their data, when they should reopen. And so oftentimes, um, and a good example was last week when uh, other parts of the state opened up uh, bars. Um, Long Beach and LA County did not. Uh, and there was confusion because the governor had said that they were allowed. And so again, uh, the state will make those declarations and that doesn't mean that um, the city or the county uh, is going on that same date that is being announced at the state. I could go slower if our health indicators uh, are, are not there. And in the case of last week, that was the case. So again, today, as I talk about what is going to open um, in the future, you're gonna see some differences with what the state actually says. Um, and, and in addition to that, we understand that um, the County of Los Angeles will be putting out some additional guidance today on some industries. Uh, and we, not, we may not be completely aligned with LA County in every instance. And we wanna also explain uh, why as well. Um, but I know that our, our health team feels, um, feels strongly about where we are uh, with these industries. So I'm gonna give, uh, uh, there's two sets of industries and I'm gonna give dates for reopening for both. So to begin, I want to talk to folks about what can begin, what can start opening uh, this weekend. So um, as of uh, Friday, I believe the date is correct, Kelly. It's Friday, right? Not Saturday. So as of Friday, essentially tomorrow, uh, we will be able to reopen up um, two additional uh, industries and then expand to others. Uh, let me begin with what we can actually reopen again. So the first industry that will be allowed to uh, reopen. Uh, will be uh, bars and wineries. Now, um, please note that um, these, this industry and, and bars, bars will be asked um, per state guidance to follow really strict uh, distancing requirements like our restaurants are. And in many ways, these, these bars will have to mirror how restaurants have reopened uh, with uh, face shields and face coverings. Um, the bar tops themselves at bars will need to remain closed as they need to remain closed in restaurants. Um, this is uh, not just a, a, a Long Beach or LA County suggestion. Actually, the state is actually recommending this statewide for counties and cities to adopt. We understand that not every county is, is maybe as aggressive on health and safety as, as Long Beach is, but we wanna follow uh, the, the spirit and the guidance of what the state is saying. And so um, beginning tomorrow, our bars across the city of Long Beach, including our wineries and our tasting rooms uh, can begin to reopen safely. Later tonight, we will be putting up guidance specifically for Long Beach. So please note, if you are a bar owner or a worker or a bartender or work in a winery or a brewery, um, to look for those that guidance out tonight because it will be different than what the state has. You've gotta follow the Long Beach guidance. Um, we also know that these locations uh, can be high risk if the, uh, if the protocols aren't put in place. And so there are, will be some occupancy requirements, some protocols about the bar tops, uh, uh, bars need to be served in, in, in other areas or in, uh, the tables and other spaces. And of course, as COVID becomes hopefully less of a threat in the future, those restrictions on occupancy, not just in bars, but in restaurants and limitations will lighten as well. So bars and wineries will be one. We know that the state of California allowed those to reopen a week ago but we wanted to hold back because we felt we needed to see another week's worth of hospital data. Uh, the other, in, the other um, industry uh, specific will, that will be allowed to begin opening on, beginning on Friday 
are uh, nail salons. Um, nail salons uh, of the personal grooming industry are, 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 are being allowed to open tomorrow. Uh, the rest will open the following Friday, and I'll explain that in a minute wh why. Um, but nail salons also, uh, our health department believes, of the personal grooming group um, are, are the safest uh, uh, of that group. Um, uh, both uh, bars and wineries like uh, um, restaurants and nail salons, there'll be requirements on face shields and face coverings. When we put out the health order tonight, please know that the city, once again, will be offering free face shields uh, to our nail salon business owners, to our bar uh, owners, to our restaurant owners, and those will be available this weekend. And that information will be out in a press release tonight, which we will put out. So again, if you can't get access to a face shield or haven't already purchased them, we will provide those for free if you are a business for your employees to keep them safe. Um, and then um, uh, both, uh, both places of worship and funerals, uh, while those have maintained uh, similar rules as they have in the past, if you're having services outside, so funeral services outside or religious services outside, there is a, a large expansion of, of, of being able to have many more folks um, at those services. And that is going to be in the guidance, again, that is released tonight. Uh, and so again, beginning tomorrow, bars and wineries and tasting rooms, uh, uh, nail salons specifically, and then an expansion for funerals and places of worship, which, will, which is uh, just an adjustment that will be in the order. Uh, then um, there's an additional set of businesses and industries that will be allowed to reopen the following Friday on June the 26th. Uh, these are, we are awaiting an additional week again, just to make sure that that hospitalization percentage remains right under 60%. Um, we don't want there to be a, a, a sharp increase where then we can't go backwards. And so per the health department, uh, uh, esthetician work, facials, waxing, electrology, uh, cosmetology, uh, tattoo parlors and body art, uh, massage services, which of course are outside the healthcare setting. Um, all of those will be allowed to begin reopening on Friday, June 26. Um, and so that a date has been set. We understand that other places in the state and the county might have different opening dates, um, but from a both um, uh, health perspective uh, and uh, enforcement perspective, this is, this is the recommendation of the health department. Um, additional types of industries that are being allowed statewide, um, the city of Long Beach is not moving forward on. We are not yet gonna be reopening movie theaters. Uh, we are not yet gonna be uh, reopening family fun centers or entertainment centers, which we know the state allows, but our health department, we do not feel comfortable yet that it's safe enough to do so. And, um, and again, there's a long list of other types of, uh, uh, of industries that are not allowed yet even by the state, whether it's live performance theaters, arenas, large festivals, entertainment centers um, are, are, are not yet allowed. I want to just remind folks that um, it is better to be cautious and it is better uh, to, 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 to be safe um, than to be in a position where our hospitals are, are, are crowded and um, and we wouldn't be able to take care of someone in our community or a family member. Uh, let me again thank everyone. I know our, this has been difficult for our small businesses, but we wanna just keep the community safe. I also now wanna add that our Open Streets program uh, just launched on Tuesday. We uh, have over now over 25 street segments across the city and parklets that are opening up all across the city for physical distancing, for plazas, for promenades, to create new spaces, for restaurants to be able to expand um, into the street space. Uh, and all the information is on the longbeach.gov COVID site. So I wanna thank the city council for being uh, supportive of that. We also wanna remind individuals that the governor today put out new orders as it relates to face coverings. Our health department director is gonna go over those uh, and, and be clear. Um, and I want, we wanna remind individuals that testing continues to expand in Long Beach. Remember, if you're, anyone can get a test in Long Beach, whether you have symptoms or whether you don't have symptoms, it's open to all. And we've expanded the amount of sites that, where you can get a test uh, if you're, for, for everyone, whether you're symptomatic or not. And that, of course, is Cabrillo High School, Jordan High School, and Veterans 
uh, you can get a test if, whether you have symptoms or not. And then all the other ones, you can get tests if you have um, just symptoms. We also continue our mobile testing program in different neighborhoods. Uh, uh, and finally, before I turn this over to our um, health department director, want to share that to beginning today, our framework for reconciliation listening sessions have begun. Uh, the city council unanimously approved a process uh, to address uh, systemic racism, racial injustice, uh, and equity within our city and our community. And the city is launching um, two weeks worth, worth of intensive uh, dialogues and listening sessions that was unanimously approved by the council. Uh, th we believe um, that these will be uh, very instructive for the city and will allow us to take quick action uh, soon after. And those begin um, today as well and go on for the next couple of weeks. So thank you to everyone involved uh, with those. Um, with that, I'm going to turn this over to our health department director, uh, Kelly Colopy, who will have um, a lot more to announce. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, so as the mayor stated, uh, we are updating the health order. Uh, we're working on that right now. Uh, they'll be effective tomorrow. It has a lot more guidance based uh, on guidance from the state of California. Beginning tomorrow, uh, places of worship will be per permitted to uh, further open and political gatherings will be allowed uh, without, um, without a cap on numbers as long as they are outside. Um, to, and so that really supports the ability to, you know, we still want the distancing and, and the six feet. Uh, there's no maximum attendance for any outdoor faith-based services or political gatherings. The attendees at these services just have to really make sure that they are standing uh, six feet apart and, unless they are with their family members. Indoor faith-based services remain limited to 25% of occupancy or 100 people. In addition, bars and wineries may reopen at 50% capacity with bar areas closed and no standing permitted restaurant style seating only. Uh, you know, we really, we want to be able to support businesses at their opening and we want to make sure we're doing it as safely as possible. Uh, the risk for bars is, is pretty high um, when you run bars as a way the bar normally looks. And so uh, we are going to be allowing the opening of bars, but the, the guidance that supports for restaurants is also applicable to the bars. So it means all people are seated, uh, that the, the drinks are delivered to the table, and people cannot order drinks at the bar or stand around the bar. There's really no, no standing around. So uh, all those guidance will be in place, but it will allow bar settings to open and to people uh, to be able to participate. Also, nail salons, but not other personal care services, uh, will be opening tomorrow. A lot of people wonder about that, you know, why that would be, and it's really um, many of the personal services that people engage in have, require a lot of face-to-face -face contact. So anytime that you are working, um, you know, a lot of the different services require that one of the people does not have a face covering on. Um, sometimes these services are almost an hour long uh, with two people pretty close together or not from the same household. Uh, even a face covering can't withstand, uh, can't withstand uh, the germs that, go, that are in that space. And so we really do want to hold back. They are at a higher risk uh, than nail salons. So nail salons tomorrow, uh, the remaining personal services uh, next week. It is important to note that even though uh, more businesses and organizations can resume operations tomorrow, it does not mean that they should feel confident. They, they have to be make, make sure that they can implement the mandated protocols to protect the health of their employees and their customers. So with the guidance coming out tonight and the possibility of opening tomorrow, we really want to make sure that people have everything in place before they open their doors. Uh, to facilitate that, we will be looking at offering free face shields. Uh, face shields are required in the situations of uh, restaurants and bars for the servers because because the other people are not wearing their face coverings. Uh, so we will be offering free face shields uh, this weekend, so please uh, look for more information on that. We're setting that up right now. Additionally, as the mayor indicated, personal care services will be permitted to open uh, next Friday moving forward. So with these additional reopenings, we want to get things right. It's important for all businesses and patrons to follow necessary safety protocols to protect everyone's health. This includes the use of the face coverings when you're out in public. So the state we, the state has mandated uh, a set of guidance around face coverings. So we've been, we have had in our order face coverings pretty much any time that you are out of your home and around other people. Any time you visited a store, any time you visited a restaurant, except while you're eating, pretty much face coverings are required. Today, the state now mandates that as well. So this, the guidance issued today is in line with what our city has recommended over the last few months. 
It states that people must wear face coverings when they're in high risk situations, which include being inside of or in line to any public space. So anytime that you're standing outside to get into a grocery store or a restaurant, you need to maintain the six feet and have your face covering on. Obtaining services from your healthcare provider, waiting for or riding public transportation or paratransit vehicle taxis, private car services or ride sharing vehicles. So pretty much any time you're in transportation then that's not your own car, uh, you should have a face covering on. Uh, when you are driving or operating any public transportation, paratransit vehicle, taxi, private uh, car or ride sharing vehicle um, when, pas when passengers are present, but they also encourage you to wear them even when passengers are not present. Uh, while at work, when you're interacting with members of the public, preparing food, sharing common areas, or an enclosed area with others, um, and while outdoors in public spaces, when you're not able to stay six feet away from those who are not members of your household. Certain individuals are exempt from wearing face coverings. These include young children who are uh, two years old or younger, those with medical or mental health conditions or disabilities that prevent them from wearing a face covering, persons who are hearing impaired or communicating with a person who is hearing impaired, or those for whom face covering, wearing a face covering could create a risk to the person. There are specific circumstances when people do not have to wear face coverings generally, such as when you are working or recreating outside uh, or while eating or drinking at a restaurant. Um, and that is if you can maintain your six feet uh, distancing. So I really want you to be thinking about the risk, the risk every time that you walk out the door. Um, we continue to open, people feel safer, but I want you to think about um, like if you were getting in your car. So is driving a car safe? It, there's risk of driving a car. The way we make it safer is we wear our seatbelt. So we have, we have airbags, we have seatbelts, we have all these things to make that safer. Consider your face covering, your distancing, and your hand sanitizer. All of those things that are making you safer in a car, that is making you safer in the space. Those are the things that we want you to be thinking about. In general, the more closely you interact with others and the longer that interaction, the higher the risk of spread. There's always a chance that you can get sick when you engage in public activities and interact with people you don't live with. Here are a few questions that you should ask yourself as you're walking out the door. How many people are you gonna interact with? You know, interacting with more people raises your risk. Being a group of people who aren't physically distanced or not part of your household or not wearing face, covering, gather, sorry, face coverings increases your risk. Engaging with people you don't know also increases your risk. And some people, um, some people have the virus and they don't have symptoms. And so you just don't know um, what that's gonna look like. Also, can you keep six feet of space between you and others? Are you gonna be outdoors or are you gonna be indoors? The closer you are to other people who may be infected, the greater your risk of getting sick. Keeping distance from other people is especially important for people who are at higher risk of severe illness, such as older adults and those with underlying medical conditions. Indoor spaces are more risky than outdoor spaces where it might be harder to keep people apart and where there's less ventilation. And finally, think about what's the length of time you're gonna be interacting with people. Spending more time with people who may be uh, infected increases your risk of being infected. Spending more time with people increases your risk of being infected if there's any chance that you are, or infecting others if there's any chance you may already be infected. So remember, keep these things in mind. Think about the risk as you walk out the door. Keep it, remember to keep your face covering in your car, in your bag, in your pocket, around your wrist, around your ear, I don't care where it is. Keep the face covering attached to you so that it's easy to put on if you are in any of those situations. Uh, also to make sure that you have tissues hand, and hand sanitizer, at least 60% alcohol, if possible. So even though all the businesses are reopening, we still think it's safer to stay at home, um, but just take these, uh, really be paying attention to the risks. And if you need any additional information, including the guidances for the businesses that are preparing to open, you can find the health order, you can find the guidances, and anything else you wanna know about COVID-19 at the longbeach.gov forward slash COVID-19. I'll turn it back to the mayor. Thank you. I also, of course, want to want to thank um, Paola, who's doing our ASL translation, uh, and Alice from the health department as well, who will we'll do our Spanish recap after any questions. Kevin. Thank you, Mayor. We have some questions from the media. First question comes from Haley from the Press Telegram. Go ahead, Haley. Hi. Uh, given the uh, changes with uh, religious and political outdoor gatherings, is it safe to say that there was not a spike or anything seen associated with the protests that have happened in Long Beach over the past few weeks? 
the change in the gatherings is actually a real focus still on masking and six feet different or distance. So we're still tracking uh, the information around the protests. Uh, we have not seen a spike. We've seen a little bit of an increase, but we've got another about two weeks before we see the, the full impact. So it's not, we're really looking at it as um, it's First Amendment rights uh, for people to be able to speak. And so we're no longer limiting limiting that, but we do, the, the requirement is that you maintain your distance and wear a face covering the whole time that you are there, both um, in the uh, faith-based setting as well as the, um, the protest setting. Thank you, Kelly. Next question comes from Jason at the Long Beach Post. Go ahead. Jason. Hi, this question, oh, hi. This question is actually for the mayor. Um, so this is in regard to uh, face mask wearing. Obviously, the governor put out uh, an executive order today requiring it for everybody in the state. Um, but locally, you know, we've been opening things um, slowly. And, you know, the city or the county of Los Angeles reported on Monday that nearly half of its restaurants weren't in compliance with local guidelines. Um, here in Long Beach, we've had several complaints about restaurants, uh, other businesses, or just individual people not abiding by uh, the guidelines. What has the city been doing to enforce that? And does it have any plans to uh, increase enforcement of that as we continue to reopen the economy? Yeah, I mean, I think that Kelly probably has more of an answer on the enforcement piece. I think that um, the, the state uh, face covering order, which was, I believe, changed today, if that's right, Kelly. Um, so the city of Long Beach is actually going to be adjusting its face covering uh, order as well um, to do some alignment with the state, but also just to clarify, I think, uh, some of the order as well, but essentially we think that the governor's order uh, just will bring more of a standard um, statewide for face coverings. Uh, face coverings, of course, um, it's, it's, they're, they're not obviously required if you are at a restaurant eating or if you are obviously having a, a drink at, one of the, at a bar itself, it's obviously difficult to wear a face covering, so the, the requirement is not there, but which is why the server um, is we're really encouraging the, the face covering and the face shield to have that double protection for, uh, for the server. Um, and so I know we've gotten actually a lot of comments uh, from folks that um, are calling, they'll say, hey, these, these folks that are at this restaurant, we're not wearing a face covering, um, and um, they're not required to wear a face covering if they're actually sitting together um, and, they're, and, and they're eating. And so that, I know there's confusion around that, um, but there is enforcement. I, I understand that this upcoming weekend, uh, there is going to be actually a very large enforcement effort from the city. Um, there has, you know, the city has tried to do education first, but um, do you have any more comments on the enforcement effort for the weekend, Kelly? So we have a venue task force. Uh, we're doubling the size of the venue task force uh, for this weekend. So um, in terms of face coverings, when people are uh, walking into a restaurant, they should be wearing their face covering until they sit down, just so people don't like that there's some clarity there. So if they're waiting outside and then when they're walking inside. But there are businesses uh, that we're seeing in Long Beach as well as what the county is seeing that are not following all the protocols. It's dangerous both to their, to their staff as well as to people who are there. So we are doubling the size of the venue task force this weekend. We'll be out. Uh, you know, and enforcing and really we're letting people know what, what the rules are for those who are newly opening. Um, but for those who have been visited before, uh, there'll be a stronger stance taken uh, moving forward. It is very important that all businesses, if they have the privilege to open within, within the, this COVID times, that we want to make sure that they are following the rules. Thank you, Kelly. Um, now we have a couple questions from social media. This first one is for uh, the mayor. Mayor, some of the open streets proposed would force car traffic to very busy streets, which some drivers may have difficulty nav navigating. Will traffic engineers be weighing these issues and provide exemptions during certain hours? Well, traffic engineers are very involved in the open streets program. So each street that um, becomes a slow street or, or an open street um, goes through a traffic engineer process. So they are looking at that issue specifically. Um, we've heard, you know, loud and clear that folks want more outdoor recreation spaces and be able to walk with their families, and so that's why these are being placed across the city. As I understand it, I know the city council offices have been very involved in, in with the communities and making sure the streets are are, are in the right places as, or, and with the business community. So, yes, traffic is involved in those. They are monitoring how traffic could be diverted, and we'll make adjustments if needed. Uh, I think we've we're launched about 25 open street projects uh, this week, which is really exciting, and um, and a lot of more parklets. I think we have maybe three or four parklets 
or maybe maybe four or five parklets that have opened. We've got an additional four or five opening up this weekend, uh, and that will continue. So we're 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 really glad that this, this program is moving so fast. Thank you, Mayor. Next couple of questions are for Kelly. Kelly, how many people have been tested in Long Beach so far, and do we track negative test results as well? We do. So we have had about fifty-seven thousand people tested uh, throughout the city throughout the. The, um, since COVID began, we do track negatives as well. So that's how we look at our positivity rate. We take the total number of positives divided by the total number um, of cases, including all the negatives. Uh, at this time, our positivity rate is about 7%, which is up slightly, but still uh, well below the figures the, the state um, recommended. So Thank you. These next are related questions. So first, are businesses allowed to have live bands and dancing? And then also, are private residents allowed to have a street party with live music in a neighborhood? At this time, there's no entertainment allowed. So no live bands, no live dancing, uh, whether in a bar or a nightclub that might be opening. Uh, in terms of um, in, local, uh, in local spaces, again, um, we want people to be staying at home. We want people to not be gathering. Uh, gatherings, public gatherings are still not allowed under the um, under the state guidance. So uh, we would uh, discourage uh, local, you know, where people are gathering. If everybody's sitting in their front yard, staying with their families, and you put a band in the middle of the circle, uh, I think that you can, you may be able to do that, but would, that would be it. We don't want, uh, we don't want different families coming together um, in spaces as a gathering. We need, to, we need to confirm on the bands, but in terms of the uh, nightclubs and others, if there's, uh, there is no dancing um, moving forward, but I think in terms of, and <laughs> I'm sorry, we need to clarify on that. There's a, there's a lot of different feedback going on just at this moment. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, and that, and that yeah, question came up on clarify. social media. I think, yeah, I think, um, and we'll, we'll clarify this, but I, and I could be wrong. I think that uh, you can have live music if you, if you had a permit prior to COVID that allows you to do live music and it can be distance. Whether or not you can do that or not, I think the health department will check, right, Kelly, we'll put that out later today. Yeah. I think there's been um, different interpretations of that. So just wanna clarify that, we'll, we'll look into that. Thank you, Mayor. And, and it came up on social media, so we'll make sure we get back to the so social post. And that's it for the questions. Muy buenas tardes. Gracias por acompañarnos hoy en nuestra sesión informativa um, del jueves 18 de junio. Queremos empezar uh, reconociendo la Corte Suprema hoy relacionado con el programa DACA, Acción Diferida para los Llegados en la Infancia. Este momento afirma nuestra creencia de que los inmigrantes tienen todo el derecho de sentirse seguros, trabajar, educarse y ser parte de nuestro país y nuestra comunidad. Aplauso a nuestros grupos de derechos de los inmigrantes que aún han luchado incansablemente para ser reconocidos y a nuestros jóvenes de DACA que nunca han perdido la esperanza en continuar sus estudios, trabajar y para apoyar a nuestra economía. Uh, siendo, um, el alcalde um, este, también compartió él como un maestro eh, hace pocos años y también como inmigrante también este, muchos estudiantes que él uh, pudo uh, tener en sus salones de clase son niños que representaban a la comunidad de DACA y se merecen las mismas oportunidades de cualquier otro estudiante ahora en el momento de un camino claro hacia la ciudadanía para estos estudiantes y sus familias. Seguimos con nuestra información de nuestros números. Uh, desde hoy, 2,888 residentes han salido positivos del coronavirus. Aproximadamente 2,173 personas se han recuperado. Informamos que hemos perdido a 116 residentes de la ciudad de Long Beach y 89 de esas muertes han sido en centros de enfermería de largo plazo. Nuestra capacidad en los hospitales, a medida que continuamos reabriendo nuestra economía de manera segura, es fundamental que nuestros hospitales estén preparados y seguimos listos en caso de un aumento repentino. Actualmente tenemos 74 personas hospitalizadas. Nuestras hospitalizaciones se han mantenido estables. Sin embargo, es 
fundamental también que todos sigan las pautas de seguridad, se aseguren de distanciarse físicamente y recuerden ponerse la cobertura en su casa, de, de su cara cuando salgan de su casa al público. Nuestra orden de salud, hay más datos uh, y nueva información a nuestra orden de salud que saldrá a, en, en pocas horas esta noche. Queremos anunciar uh, aperturas adicionales. Estas aperturas se realizarán en alineación con el condado de Los Ángeles y también siempre con el estado de California también. A partir de mañana, viernes 19 de junio, sí se podrán reabrir los, los bares y bodegas de vino y también los salones de uña. Claro que se permiten estos lugares a reabrir, pero solo con pautas establecidas para garantizar que estén muy seguras al público, que no nomás para el público, pero también los negocios y sus empleados. Tomar medidas de precaución es una responsabilidad uh, compartida y de las empresas y los clientes. Todos debemos continuar a poner de nuestra parte para asegurarnos que todos estemos más seguros en, en cuando seguimos reabriendo la economía. También ya sabemos que habíamos reabierto las iglesias y funerarias, pero sí hay un poquito más de flexibilidad en esos eventos si es que son um, hechos al aire libre. So, hay más información y toda esa información va a estar en nuestra, en nuestra media del la, la, seguro, en nuestra orden de, de salud. La orden de salud. Este, los servicios, otros servicios de cuidado personal como tratamientos para la cara, como faciales, depilación o cualquier servicio de cosmetólogo pueden reabrir la proxim, el próximo viernes, este 26 de junio. También en eso se incluyen uh, los salones de tatuaje, servicios y salones de masaje también. Algunos, pero recordarles que los, al, aún los negocios cerrados, que seguirán cerrados después de las, entre las, las próximas semanas, todavía son los cines, centros de entretenimiento, salas de conciertos locales, estadios, arenas y cualquier festival. Uh, los protocolos para los negocios que ahora sí pueden abrir pero todos tienen requisitos que ayudan a crear más seguros para los trabajadores y los clientes. Estos protocolos estarán disponibles en nuestro sitio de web um, para, para mañana también. Les pedimos a todos que agradezcan al, al personal y a los dueños de negocios que están tomando esto en serio y están haciendo de su parte para mantener a la comunidad más segura. También es un esfuerzo apoyar aún más la recuperación del coronavirus para restaurantes y negocios y el Consejo de la Ciudad de Long Beach y la Alcaldía aprobó esta semana una iniciativa que, se, que es calles abiertas o como se conoce en inglés, Open Streets. Esta iniciativa de Open Streets transformará temporalmente las áreas públicas públicas, incluidas las aceras, los estacionamientos de autos en la calle, las plazas y los paseos en espacios seguros para actividades físicamente alejadas. So, so, estábamos recibiendo mucha información que la comunidad quería maneras de poder salir un poco a, a tomar el sol, a tomar aire libre y, con, y juntarse con sus familiares afuera en los negocios. So, esta es una manera de poder reabrir un poco más y darle la oportunidad a los negocios para poder vender comida, vender cosas al aire libre. Um, este programa incorporará el cierre de calles residenciales para apoyar las oportunidades uh, del comercial al aire libre. So, es también más oportunidad para salir, uh, también para hacer ejercicio y estar you know, en caminatas o, en, o ciclistas también. Hay que recordarles que entre más importantes es que estamos reabriendo, es mucho más importante que sigamos hasta, uh, teni tomando la oportunidad para seguir haciéndose las pruebas del coronavirus. Hay muchos uh, lugares todavía donde puede recibir estas uh, pruebas, pero sí hemos modificado un poco nuestros horarios. En la, en la uh, high school de Cabrillo, en el West Side, estamos de 10 a 1, solo los lu de lunes a miércoles. Y en la high school Jordan, Estamos es de jueves a domingo de 3 a 5 de la tarde en el Estadio Veterans, que es, está en el colegio de Long Beach City College sobre la Carson. Y um, es solo de 3, es de lunes a viernes de 3 a 5 de la tarde. Este, las pruebas, y claro que la, el, el sitio que no ha cambiado el horario es el que está en el, en el colegio de Long Beach City College sobre la PCH. Y ese horario sigue igual de 10 a 1 todos los días. 
Las pruebas móviles continúan estando disponibles para aquellos que no puedan abandonar sus residencias por cualquier razón, sea médica o que no se puedan mover. Si quiere más información, puede recibir más en nuestro sitio de web del COVID-19 de la ciudad. Uh, también las sesiones de escucha de reconciliación. Sabemos que hablamos un poco de esto el lunes. Um, queremos mencionar que esta noche este, organizamos la primera de muchas sesiones de escucha con miembros de la comunidad para escuchar sus relatos y experiencias de injusticia racial y des desigualdad como parte del proceso de la ciudad para restablecer un marco de reconciliación para la ciudad de Long Beach. Más información en nuestro sitio de web también para las próximas sesiones. Nuestra directora Kelly Collipi también estuvo aquí para dar unos datos sobre nuestra orden de salud actualizada. Como declarar, declaramos que el Estado ya hizo desde este viernes, ha pasado algunas otras um, pautas para nuestras órdenes de quedarnos en casa. A partir de mañana se abren los lugares de culto, como les uh, dijimos, reuniones políticas que siempre cumplan con sus requisitos para salud y proteger contra la propagación del virus. Las reuniones políticas pueden tener lugar con restricciones similares, claro que tienen que ser al aire libre. Las, uh, los servicios religiosos están limitados a solo la capacidad de 25% o ocupación de 100 personas o, meno, o menos. Además, que los bares y bodegas también solo pueden volver a reabrir con solo 50% de capacidad, con las áreas de bares y cerradas y solo asientos estilo restaurante para servir comida. El riesgo de los bares son muy altos en este momento, so por eso es que no se puede ordenar una bebida en, en, el, en la barra. Tiene que ordenarla en un asiento. Este, los salones de uñas abrirán mañana, viernes 19 de julio. Otros servicios adicionales como de cuidado personal, este, uh, les recordamos que no van a abrir hasta el próximo viernes. Estamos anunciando esto hoy para que las empresas tengan tiempo para prepararse para asegurarse que eh, emiten todos los requisitos para res, reducir el riesgo de transmisión. Um, con estas aperturas adicionales queremos hacer las cosas bien. Es importante que todas las empresas y clientes sigan los protocolos de seguridad necesarios para proteger la salud de todos, incluyendo seguir usando sus coberturas para la cara y también practicando el distanciamiento físico. Esa es una, fue una gran parte este, esta mañana del gobernador Newsom, del gobernador de California, que este, está recomendando que es, um, asegurar que todos estén todavía usando sus coberturas para la cara. La guía establece que las personas en nuestro estado de California usen esto para las situaciones en, al, en alto riesgo, que incluyen estar dentro de una línea para ingresar a cualquier espacio público. Eso es que todavía en las tiendas, si es que no dejan entrar um, y están haciendo la línea afuera, todavía tienen que usar su cobertura para la cara afuera y también cuando entren al negocio. Obtener servicios médicos si van al doctor, en camino al doctor, si están usando transportación pública, también es importante. Tienen que usar las coberturas en taxis, servicios de automóviles privados, cuanto sea que su, el automóvil no sea suyo. Si usted está compartiendo un auto con alguien, está um, siguiendo cualquier uh, manera de, de, para llegar a otro lugar este, en, en un autobús o taxi, como sea, tiene que usar la cobertura. La única manera que no tiene que usar su cobertura es si usted está uh, manejando su propio automóvil. Mientras en, en el trabajo y interactuando en el trabajo de miembros del público, cuando están preparando alimentos, comparten áreas comunes en áreas cerradas, es muy importante seguir usando estas coberturas. Mientras en, la, en las áreas cuando están uh, compartiendo espacio al aire libre o en público y no puedan mantener el distanciamiento físico de seis pies, también es importante y requerido seguir usando las coberturas. Ciertas personas sí están extentas de usar protectores, y esos son los niños menores de dos años. Um, hay unas circunstancias específicas en las que las personas no tienen que usar las coberturas para la casa, pero es cuando se dedican al trabajo de recreación al aire libre o mientras que están en un antro comiendo un restaurante y obviamente estén tomando su bebida o comiendo. 
Um, esto es muy importante porque es una manera de, de reducir el riesgo. Eso es lo que tenemos que tratar de eh, establecer estas costumbres. Um, es lo, el nuevo normal, so continuar usando estas um, cosas para proteger y para asegurarnos que no sigamos una propagación del virus otra vez. En general, en general, cuando más estrechamente interactúes con los demás y cuando más largas te, sean las inter, interacciones con otras personas, más sube el riesgo de um, contraer o pasarle el virus a otras personas. Este, de esta manera queremos asegurarnos que ustedes tengan toda la información y si todavía necesitan más información sobre los negocios y todo lo que es va a reabrir, no olviden que pueden a tener todo, todo lo relacionado con el coronavirus en nuestro sitio de web en www.longbeach.gov barra diagonal COVID-19 y también puede seguir llamando a nuestra a, línea informativa del coronavirus que es al número 562-570-4636. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos esta tarde. Es todo por hoy. Um, that's all for today. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll be back next week, Monday, June 22nd. Thank you.